Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. And I'm really, when I talk about my work, I'm, uh, you know, I, I teach and coordinate uh, foundations as well as uh, painting and drawing at my university. Uh, so this is a 2D uh, class, uh, foundations course. And uh, so I'm interested to talk to you about my work because I think that a lot of the things that you learn apply to what I do. Um, and then there, there's some of these rules that you have that I'm, I try to think around. You know, I, I, like, for example, making a decision. Uh, sometimes I don't have to make a decision. It's already been made for me. And, but I, I'm going to talk a little bit about the work uh, that inspired me as I was going through my, my schooling uh, that, that made a difference. Uh, this is uh, Marcel Brudhar's uh, work. Um, I, I don't have my notes with me. It's not working on the, on the screen. But, uh, it's the, uh, the, uh, the leg bone of a, uh, and a leg bone of a French woman. And the idea about the piece and, and is that cultural identity is bone deep. And that there are certain signifiers, specifically the use of color, that we can, con we can contribute to culture and cultural identity. So, uh, Brudhars did this, and I thought this was really brilliant. And, um, and then at, the, at around uh, 99 and 2000, uh, Mark Dion uh, did a, uh, an excavation of the Thames River uh, in London uh, for, the, for the Tate Museum prior to the Tate being the new Tate building. And what they did is they, they walked out along that river and gathered objects, all the objects that they could find. Some of them were very, very old, clay pipes. And, and, and other discarded uh, bits from hundreds of years ago, all the way up to cell phones and contemporary objects. Uh, this was then turned around into an installation at the Tate, uh, examining those things of our culture that were, were pulled out of this random sample. Randomness has something to do with my work as well. So this is, a, and, and uh, Dion is really interested in uh, the amateur. You know, it, it, as an archaeologist, he was an amateur, but he was able to do this, and he volunteers and helped. So after graduate school, I became an archaeologist for a while. I was starting to make maps and about culture, and I thought I needed a, I had my master's degree, but I wanted to have a little bit more uh, real science experience. So I did this for a year, and it was a great, it was a great time. I learned a lot. Uh, but what was, what was really great about it is that I was able to take it and kind of appropriate some of the rules that go along with archaeology and science to make my, my work. So what you're seeing here is an archaeological feature. And there are two ways to look at it. From the top, like bird's eye down, you could see that the, it has this circle. And each circle is usually a pit or a house or something that was made and then filled in a long time ago, thousands of years ago. Uh, then if you cut it like a cake, you can see the layers, like time, right? So what came first would be way on the bottom. And what came last would be at the top of the hole, like a trash can. You throw Monday's garbage in, Tuesday's, Wednesday's, Thursday. You could go back to see what you ate on Monday by what's on bottom. Now, I, I took this idea of time, and I, I'm flipping it a little bit about color coding. So I appropriated it, and I was thinking about these ideas, our cultural ideas, these significant um, characters that are imbued with what, we, what our morals are, uh, what we would like us to be like, right? Uh, also, the idea of the superhero in general uh, is... Uh, akin to maybe historically like gods, uh, but also, uh, you know, it, it's a manifestation of what we desire. This idea of maybe there's someone who's helpful. Maybe there's someone who's strong enough to help. Maybe there's someone who has the right motivations to help, right? So you could take someone like Superman, Batman, any, any, any of those. But you could also do it to, to uh, like, real people, or you could think about uh, other cartoon characters that might signify something. So in this case, you can see that I can diagram out Superman in this sequence of color. And then that little map at the top, um, I'll show it again here in a second. Uh, I, so I, I was like, all right, so Superman belongs to all of us. 
And that's what I like. I like work that belongs, uh, things that belong to all of us. I'm, I'm, you know, difference should be celebrated, but I love it when we're all connected. Those are the things that I'm interested in. So I thought, well, Superman, he, he lives in Metropolis. So I mapped all the metropolises in the United States. And there were three of them. And I found a Gotham in Wisconsin. There was only one Gotham that's in Wisconsin, so I, I put that up there too. I drilled holes in this map, and then I pour through it. I call these things jigs. Uh, I make these, these mechanisms that repeat tasks. As a carpenter, I learned that, uh, that you, you, you can build an apparatus to help you make your work. Uh, so I'd make lots of these. Uh, but this is just one example that you'll see today. And so in the end, I have this map of the United States uh, where all the potential Batmans and Robins could live. Batmans and, and, and uh, Superman. I did Batman and Robin too, which you'll see that in a minute. So it could be an abstract painting. If you don't understand, that, if you don't read the title, you can look at it as an abstract painting. But if you have the title, which is called Batman Superman Team Up, number one, right? You kind of start to get it. And if you're like me, who lived in Illinois, we have a town called Metropolis, just south of uh, where I lived at. So every time I would go there, they had this big Superman sculpture you know, in the middle. And so I was like, that's not really where Superman lives. So in Gotham, Wisconsin, what I did is I, was like, I did it. Uh, this is called Batman and Robin over Gotham topographically. So I could start looking at the types of mapping. So it could be a general map or it could be a topographical map, a stereogeographic map, all kinds of maps out there. So if I'm interested in a particular look or a feel to the map, I can select what kind I would like to use. And I, I, I think this is in the col collection of a, of a, a sculptor in Dallas, uh, Eric Swinson. Uh, oh, um, yes. Okay, yeah, um, this, wa these were a, this was a small painting. But some of them get large, and we'll talk about that too. Most of them are about the size of a map, the map you buy. So I'm appropriating the, the scale of the map. I'm appropriating the map. I'm appropriating the colors of the map. And I'm appropriating the colors of the ideas that I'm mapping. So all I have to do is my decision is what do I choose to map? After that, everything else is kind of laid out for me because it's data. It's out there. I just have to bring it together. Okay, so this, is, this was a four by four, four foot by four foot. I paint on aluminum. Uh, it's, it's like a, a sign material. Uh, in the early days, I used spray paint, but now I use autourethane. And the pores that you see here are uh, uh, surfboard resin. I used to use a PVA, but now I use a surfboard resin. So I, I, I order my materials from Hawaii and California and they come to, to North Carolina for me, and I get to make them. This is, uh, yeah, this is uh, uh, Spider-Man and Silver Surfer over New York stereo geographically. This is a lot of my research. Uh, my sketchbooks look like this. You know, I'm just transcribing data I find. And this is just a list of all, like, uh, um, uh, theme parks, Alaska land. Uh, uh, let's see, what are the other ones? Rawhide. You know, these, are, these were uh, uh, theme parks that I was mapping. This is uh, all the International House of Pancakes in the continental United States by logo color. So sometimes that research takes a long time. If I'm going to try to research where every one of these are, and, I have, and this is six foot by six foot, so I'm building a mechanism, another one of those pouring things, with all these holes in it. Really weird thing, too, the time I decided to do this, they had just changed their logo colors. The blue was a little more aqua at one time, uh, but now it's this. So, I Also, I thought since it's the International House of Pancakes, we didn't need the rest of the world, so I wrapped it like a globe without everything else there. Uh, I like to be kind of funny with my work because abstract, abstract painting can be kind of aloof. It, it's hard, if, you, if you're not a painter, sometimes it's hard to get into it. So. Uh, I like to use humor and, again, those things that connect us as topics so that you have an entry into the work. I'm not here to build a barrier between you and the work. I want you to be in it and, ex and, and experiencing it, understanding it. So I, I, I don't, uh, you know, all the titles are what they are. I don't try to make up, you know, Untitled 4 or Spring Vision number 7 or, you know, <laughs> it's always exactly what it is. 
<clears throat> this is all the Wild West theme parks in the United States by logo color. I also get to play around with the map colors. This is, this is about five foot, but uh, it's, I get to play with the map coding a little bit uh, just to push the abstraction. Okay, so, uh, sorry, this is a little pixelated. Um, this was an installation I did for uh, Dave Mueller, uh, LA artist. Uh, this is a called Free Day Weekend event. And uh, he was like, I, I have this, we're gonna do this in a jail in St. Louis. And I said, can I have a cell? And he's like, yeah, you can have a cell. And uh, so I went and I, I was thinking about like, what, is, what does a jail cell mean? And usually it, it exists because there are normal activities and things that are not normal activities. If you don't, if you don't you know, follow the rules, you get thrown in there. So what I did was I, uh, on the wall, uh, I used a signed vinyl and then I poured in my studio. I had to pour it and then move it there to install it. Um, there's a certain drying time, so it was real timing. You know, I had to like, get it just about dry and then peel it off plastic and glue it to the wall. Um, and this is a, a map of all the odds and normals in the United States, all the cities named odd and normal. On the other side, so I had this like really normal side of a map and organized information, and then I have this odd side where things are um, uh, a little more up to, uh, to the, the chaos of the microcosm of the paint to flow and move. And this is called any number of convicts at any given time. And I was using the black and white stripe as that, because this was like from the 20s, this, this jail cell. So I was thinking about those striped outfits that they wore as criminals. Okay. Here's another sketchbook page. I'll show you a few of these. So not only am I interested in, in what meanings are behind uh, superheroes, uh, the other things too, like relationships, right? Uh, uh, we can compare and contrast. Thank you, okay. It's interesting because like Fred Flintstone represents the, the everyman, right? He was the, the fallible, unlike Superman, he's fallible uh, and more like us. So he's kind of this general human, which has now been supplanted by Homer Simpson and you know, other, other father-husband types. But they still have the same role of messing up and, and you know, loving their family and all that stuff. But those are the things we, we, we do. We, we are connected to that character because of that. We share in the characteristics. And then here <coughs> you have Mickey Mouse. You know, Mickey Mouse started out as a plush toy, as something for entertainment. But now across the globe, it means America. So the production of this small entertaining piece of art started to signify a culture, our culture here in the United States. This is uh, Batman over Robin profiled. So um, you can see uh, the feet all the way up to the head of Robin, and then Batman is on top, one feet first, you know, then the tights, then the belt, you know. Uh, also, uh, at the end of every one of mine, uh, there's another little bit I keep, I keep glossing over because it, it repeats itself. It's, uh, this is Batman over Robin using the law of superpositioning. That's that one of those rules that I picked up from archaeology. Um, it, it's kind of at the end of every one of my titles, but I tend to chop it off because it's easier just to talk about it that way. Uh, these are Mickey's over Hello Kitty. <laughs> right, so we get, we get to understand that now we have another culture who has appropriated this idea of a, a singular animal object that can represent culturally a group of people. So Hello Kitty becomes that, that, um, uh, that same kind of thing. This is a pastel drawing. Uh, the other things have been paintings. Uh, these are pastel drawings, uh, and, and they're pretty big. I'm, you know, they're, they're like this big. Uh, chalk pastel. This is, this is uh, Kermit's over Piggy, <laughs> right? Using law of superpositioning. And you know, I, I was thinking about this when I was making this drawing. I was thinking, you know, if you've ever been in a pond or a lake and you see bullfrog eggs, uh, they're in this sphere. They, they, it's like a basketball size thing, and it's usually hooked to a reed or something. So I, I thought like, well, Kermit's a bullfrog or whatever he is, and I thought <laughs> maybe that. I also think that every time like we, we are a product of these exposures 
over and over again. Like, you know, now they've reinvented the Muppets. Again, that's on TV and it's more adult. And so uh, it's interesting that we, we still hold on to it. We are exposed to it many, many times. And those tend to kind of pile up on us, right? This is called infinite homers. We're looking at dots of color, but I just made everybody laugh that it's infinite homers, right? <laughs> Again, it's kind of a bigger drawing, pastel drawings. Uh, when I was doing the series, I just, I just lined my wall with big sheets, and I did lots of drawings. Some were good, some were not that good, but, you know. Uh, and uh, about that accumulation effect, this, this is called the, the Great Wall of Aquaman, <laughs> right? And so, like, if you get enough of this stuff, you know, it, started, it starts to become massive, monumental, the effect. And what I like about, and, and, I, and I play around a lot with, with Aquaman because everyone does. He's kind of that superhero that is kind of a half laugh because he can't fight outside the water or what, it can't do anything for you, you know. You have to be on a boat, you know, or something. The Great Piles of Betty Boop. Now these are smaller drawings. These, uh, these, these drawings were like colored pencil drawings is what they were. And, um, I, you know, as, as an archaeologist, I was, just, I was always out in the field, and I became the site photographer. So I was photographing everything, and then we also had to draw things. And I had to teach a lot of the archaeologists how to take pictures of holes in the ground and how to draw artifacts. And so a lot of this is about, like, site drawing and, and understanding, uh, like, this conceptual place of, like, where I store all the exposure of Betty Boop you know, in, in my own place. <coughs> More about research. Uh, these are some globes. These are found globes, but I, I added to them. The one on the top right, uh, that's all the McDonald's on Earth. That it's, it's titled McDonald's Land. And then uh, the, the child's globe there, uh, that is called Barbie's Dream Globe. Everywhere on Earth, Barbie is sold. Now, which is really interesting, because you can take a look at McDonald's is just everywhere, right? I think in China there was a place there there was none, and then there was one, and then now maybe there's not. I'm not sure, but uh, mostly they're everywhere, and they're even on islands. Uh, you know, there's none in Cuba. You can see there, um, so you can start to see politics align with how they resist the culture, right? How they resist a cultural phenomena like McDonald's fast food, but they're they're, they're on all the like islands because they have air, they're in airports. So if you have to land on a little island somewhere, they, there's a McDonald's there. And then everywhere that Barbie is sold, um, you can see where it's not, right? Middle East, those places where they have a different cultural relationship to the, the female form than we do. So um, you, can, you can see where it's not sold. This is a, an example of some of the work in a show. The tiled image, I'm sorry about that. But you can see some of the scale. This is another sketchbook uh, piece. I, so this was this is one I've never created. Uh, maybe it's still in there. Maybe it'll come out sometime. But it was it was a, a memorial to uh, the last drive-in theater on Earth, and uh, it was going to show a movie. And uh, that I, I make out of my junk mail, things that come to my my house in my junk in, in my mail. I cut up the images and make movies out of them. Um, instead, I made this one, which was the uh, the other. I had two of them. This was the first drive-in theater on Mars. So. Uh, what you see is a lander, uh, a table. You see a plug coming out of the lander. There's actually a projector that goes up in there, and a computer or a player can be on the shelf underneath the table. I built the table. I built everything. And then uh, you can see it's projecting a, a, a movie, which, again, I, I made out of my junk mail. You can see that movie. Uh, it's online at, on my YouTube channel. Um, what did they say? OK, good. And I think, I mean, that's, I mean, that's collage, right? And you guys are going to learn about, you know, if you're not already doing it, you know, one of the aspects of 2D design is collage. And uh, I made, I, I put it in uh, a, a program called Director, and I, I made a movie with it. Um, I did this uh, synthetic uh, rain projection, and it was on the streets of St. Louis uh, for the, the total amount of time of a rainstorm. It was called One Hour of Spontaneous Beauty, and it was the duration of a rainstorm, and that was the only time I ever showed it, and it was just that one, one episode. But if you drove by, you could see it in the window, and it was it was cool. 
I also um, make these weird video games that no one can lose. It's just something to do, right? Um, and uh, so Drawing with the Stars, it's a spring night sky, and you can click on over 100 stars and drag it around, and they make trails so that you can draw with them. Sometimes people would write messages to the next person coming in, you know, like, check, check that other painting out. Um, and so there, there's some interactivity to that. Uh, I've, I've done several of these, and th this one, uh, now this is not three paintings. This is actually two different views of the same place. Mm -hmm. that, that corner just makes it right, doesn't it? Um, so when my, my first one, this was at a museum. This was the first time I showed uh, one of these in such a public place, like in such a grand place. And so um, <laughs> the computer and everything was there, and I was like, how am I going to deal with this? So I, 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 I did a flame job, a lacquer flame job on the computer. Yes, that's what computers used to look like. And, um, and a mouse, which I also flame jobbed. And then the, the mouse pad said, click and drag. And I also, I built the kiosk to look like a, a video poker machine because I felt like people don't like to interact with things in the museum. Like there's a no touching law, you know? Uh, so I had to make it inviting for them to want to touch it. Um, just trying kind of fighting that influence. So this was uh, Movable St. Louis. So you can kind of just see a peak of it. I'm sorry, I don't have a great pi picture. Uh, uh, movable St. Louis, which you can move uh, parts of the city around, uh, rivers, counties, uh, highways. And you could either make an abstract painting from it, or it could be a kind of a new map, like something political. Like uh, I, I taught in Ferguson, Missouri for 10 years prior to uh, uh, moving to Asheville. And so you could, make, you could take areas that have economic problems and put them in rich areas, or take rich areas and put them in another place. So uh, people had a really great time with this as a game. I also had, the, there was two videos going. One was also called uh, it was, uh, The Weather Machine, and you could, you could move around weather, like, a, like, uh, like a, you could be like a weather person, you know, and do this, but you could also make it do it. Uh, and then these, these two paintings uh, over here on the right, that is um, Fred in Bedrock uh, and Wilma in Bedrock. Um, <coughs> it's a, yeah, it was a pair, and there's only one bedrock in the United States. It's at the Colorado-Utah border. So if you're ever out that way, you can stop in and think about Fred and Wilma. Uh, more jigs and, and mechanisms. This was, a, this was called the, the Fuzzy Bar Spray Jig, evidently, because I wrote it down. And uh, because I was, I'm, I was getting ready to do some auto races, okay? And auto races have a definite finish, like who finished first and who finished last, so there's like an order I could use. And each car has a color. And they move. They're fast. So I wanted kind of a fuzzy spray and something that was um, consistent. So um, I would do the race. Uh, I would get the race results and then go through and look up each car colors in sequence. And then an X means that I've, I've poured it um, when I was making it. So this is an Indianapolis 500 uh, race. Um, the top pours uh, is, is the starting field. As they start the, start the race, the, the first three are on the bottom. Then also, how they finish, first place is on bottom, last place is on top. This was at the finish line. Uh, okay, so the background is the starting field, and then uh, this is like the final moment where each car was. I just let them kind of moosh. I like it, you know, because I like them when they fail as both things. Like they're an abstract painting, but they're about something. And then they're about something, but you can't really understand it because it mushes. This, uh, this is a NASCAR event. This is four foot square. Uh, and I think it's Talladega or one of those from 2007 or 8. Um, so the who came first is on bottom, who came in last is on top. Uh, the, the big pores on top of who crashed. And I also like this fuzzy background. I was really, you know, I, as an instructor, anime is like one of these horrible things that get, you know, gets regurgitated over and over and over again. But there's some beautiful things in it. Some of the backgrounds are really fuzzy and you get this like static, you know, this guy and this fuzzy in the background, right? <laughs> Well, that, I, was, I was turned on by that, and so I was interested in getting that effect, and that's why I built that jig, and I was trying to think about things that were fast, and, you know, there's a couple of them. And that's a Fraggle Rock painting. What'd you say? Yes? Mm-hmm. 
Right. Well, as I said before, I, I work on aluminum panels, and I use an auto paint or a spray paint, depending on what I'm working with. Uh, and then I, you know, just like a, you'd paint a car, I use a lot of that clear coat stuff. And um, the surfboard resin uh, is is the pores. Uh, those are the pores, and um, th you know that's the material. I use a lot of respirators and ventilation because I have very, you know, you don't want to just start doing this in your bedroom. You know, you're going to die in a week. Uh, <laughs> So, you know, I, I, I'm always in the spray booth at my university, or I'm in my own spray booth at home. I've got things built up. Uh, the, the resin isn't as bad as the spray is bad. The resin is actually a little better. But I use plenty of ventilation and stuff. Okay. So, this is interesting because the Confederate flag has come into vogue as far as a political wedge issue. Um, and I made this well before that. Um, so, it's, it's interesting to see this come around. So, what we have here uh, are two things that share an identity. So you have General Lee, and then you have the car, the General Lee, right? And so, so the, the car actually shares in the aura of the original general, what he meant, what he was about. And so we have a television program in the 70s about, or 80s, whenever that was. So here it is. This is my version of it. This is called the General Lee on General Lee. And uh, small boxes. So I was thinking about that profile, those like that Batman and Robin profile, I had the stripes, and I thought I could do this in the round, right? I could do this in the square. And then on top is a map of uh, Georgia where Hazard County would be located. Hazard County doesn't really exist, but all those great geeks out on the internet, has, they say it should be right here. They kept showing this bridge, you know, but it should be here. Uh, so I did the counties there, and then I poured um, the rebel flag colors right there on that place. This is Aquaman in the Sea of Tranquility. So I've juxtaposed Aquaman with the moon, where he wouldn't really be. Kind of like that South Park whale, you know what I'm talking about? Okay. So. So we have characters that, that um, we, we share belief systems in and we understand cultures through. Famous photographs and movies are the same kind of location. We all share them. We know them, right? And so I'm, I start re representing them in these photographic series. Now, the next there, this is that, right? And uh, it's on aluminum. And now I'm, I'm, I'm working with more airbrush now. Um, I, I work with a lot of airbrush when I start getting smaller, you know, and then I use a different size spray guns for the bigger canvases, but so they all do the same thing, they spray. And if, and, if, and if you've noticed so far, with my paintings, there's no touch, I don't touch it. I spray and I pour, spray and I pour. It's almost like I'm denying authorship almost. You know, I don't want my presence to be in it, I just want the information to come together, yeah. Um, when you did the drawing mm-hmm. I used a different material. What I used was um, uh, PVA, which is like a white glue. It, it's uh, acid-free white glue. And I mix color in it. It takes about three to four days to dry once you pour it out. In that last day, it becomes kind of rubbery. So I can peel it off of a plastic drop cloth or something. And then in just an, and I use a little caulk on the back, and I stuck it on the wall. So yeah, there's some tricks that you have to learn if you want to do something. You know, it's like, it's like, all right, how am I going to put this on the wall? It's not on a canvas, you know? And so I have to go back through my process and think, oh, it has a drying time, I can manipulate it. You know, I, go, I, I took measurements in the jail cell, and I went home and I projected those measurements, and I cut up the map. So it, it was a lot of going in, doing measuring, making some decisions, and then coming back to my studio Working out, knowing that I have to be probably flexible once I got back there, not knowing exactly how it was all going to happen, but, but being prepared for that. That's a good question. So yeah, this is, uh, yeah these, are, these are poured on, and these are aluminum. Um, this one's called Flavor Country. OK, that's a famous painting. I had uh, Lutz's information there I was going to tell you about, but I don't know. This was mine. So I profiled everybody in the boat and Old Glory. So you, could, you can see, I, as everybody gets a color. This is called an American painting. Yes? 
Good question. Uh, it's it's kind of tough. Uh, I use tapes, different types of tapes. Uh, not all tapes are created equal, so it took me several types to, to go through them uh, to find the right kind. Uh, usually, I'm always deferring back to my auto, like my auto paint distributor in town. You know, I'm always going to like, what do you got for tape? It's real sticky. You know, uh, so so there's that, and there's all kinds of, I you know, I just have like tons of different types of tapes, and they they all work for different reasons. So this is um, this is actually a, you can see this movie also online. It's called uh, Banality Transformation, and it's a video it plays out of this crate, um, and it's me making those two draw the, that painting and the, that drawing. Okay, so this is a famous photograph. That's my version of it. I was thinking about this the idea of all life is suffering because I was I was uh, doing a show about well I was in the, the show about religion and, and I'm not a religious person. And uh, I had to think about where I connect out there uh, with these philosophies. And uh, one of them is this idea that we all are, are born to suffer, um, as the Buddhist tendencies might be. Yeah. And it's the size of a record album, too. It's like the same size as the album cover. These aren't the droids you're looking for. These aren't the droids you're looking for. And I, I like this painting. I, I had this in a recent exhibition, and the Poppies painting and the, uh, the monk, the flaming monk painting. Uh, I had them in a recent exhibition. I'll show you some images of that. Um, it was about mentorship, friendship, on a path, on the, on the same path. Yeah, and I have you in just a second. Yeah, I was going to ask, you, you you said this was about that, or was it in there? Uh, it's all hand-painted, airbrush. Right, and, and because they're fuzzy, I kind of just have to get in the neighborhood, you know. But, uh, yeah. And there was one over here. Yes, I paint the backgrounds um, with an auto paint, uh, like, like you would at a custom car. And then I spray clear it with a, with a clear coat. And uh, some, sometimes I have to buff it out. And then uh, I pour uh, the, the, and these, again, are, are taped off. So this was an archaeological image. Sorry, it's blurry. But we're digging, you know, it's like we're digging down layers, right? So this was, this was a piece, uh, is a piece. It's, it's called the History of Cartoon Icons, uh, using the law of superpositioning. So this is an airbrush that looks like dried earth, cracked earth. And then on top of that, I, I have uh, Steamboat Willie uh, under Mickey Mouse, under Hello Kitty, to the top. So it's like this history timeline in a cubic form, yeah. The law of superposition is what came first is on bottom. For example, this carpet came before the tables, right? We could tell it's underneath it. So if we were to dig up the history of cartoon icons, this is, might be what it looks like. So you can be a cartoon, but if you are a person who uses the same clothing combination every week, I can, I can do something with that. Right. Okay. <laughs> so this is Tiger Woods spec specimen uh, quality. Yeah. I use um, an MDF, a medium density fiber board. It's a composite board. It's really kind of heavy and dense. Uh, again, it's a real synthetic material because it's kind of sawdust and a, like a resin glue. Uh, so I, I like to work with those kind of materials. The reason why I work with these kind of materials is because I'm from today. And if I were an archaeologist digging up my stuff, you'd look at it and say, oh, well, it had to be made within a certain time period because it's autourethanes and surfboard resins and aluminum. They didn't have that in the 12th century, right? So I'm in my time, I'm in my place making, making art with my materials. It's a conceptual method that helps me make these paintings. You know, you have to you have to make certain you, you make certain rules for yourself as an artist, uh, but and so you're you're always kind of figuring out new ways to do it. You know, so I, it, this is this is that. Uh, this is my last. I, I do three versions of almost every painting I do, and this is Fred in Bedrock number three. Um, it's about six foot tall, that wide. 
This is Batman and Robin over Gotham, Wisconsin, again, but this is a different version. So you can see that I did the topographical version, and then I can come back and, and do this fuzzy map version. This is Hank in Arlen, Texas. <laughs> yes, hometown crowd. No, Arlen doesn't really exist, right? We had to, I had to, I had, you know, again, online nerds, you guys know where it's at. I can just go look it up. Here's an example of what they might look like. Uh, that blue one is, um, uh, let's see, it, oh, it's uh, Malibu Barbie in Malibu. This was, uh, th this, this, this actually kind of got me in a little bit of trouble because um, I was talking about a, uh, a place called Cherokee, uh, which I'm near, and they have a Santa Claus land in Cherokee. So it was really interesting how a, a group of people could be fighting for kind of a truthful identity, but also superimposing all of this other kind of fantasy stuff within their, their own community. So that it was this really weird thing. And so I had this, um, the Santa dancing to this this song that was a Cherokee uh, song that was supposed to invite people into the tribe, um, and uh, I had and I had like two groups of Cherokee who came like one's like into it and one that was not into it, <laughs> <laughs> and so I just apologized and said you know sorry cultural difference apologize didn't mean to offend, but that can happen you never know and you're not trying to offend you're just trying to make art. So this is a little drawing from a sketchbook, um, and I was I was I wanted to try an, another material, one that I had never tried before, and um, so I, I started working with uh, uh, felt or, or wet felting technique, where you get animal hair and you rub it together, and so I had this idea that I was going to do a Charlie Brown, and because I was like, well, okay. So h here is, like, from that drawing comes this drawing. This is a drawing. This isn't an actual installation. The thing on the floor, that round circle on the floor, actually is a photograph. Um, but the drip isn't. Um, so this is, this is how I felt about the last drop of Charlie Brown. How I felt. <laughs> it's a way homer, I know. OK. <coughs> So I was thinking, like, who would feel the most for Charlie Brown, that last essence, that last drop? Well, it would be Snoopy, his dog, right? Unconditional love for a dog, right? The master. So uh, I thought, I'm going to paint the outside of this. This is the suburban in Chicago. And Ch Chicago, this is a big, this, for me, was a real treat. I loved uh, showing there because it was an important space. And I got to paint the outside, and I'll get to show it to you. Here's me making the felt thing. And you can see it's a lot of labor. I'm, I'm always wet and damp when I'm doing it, um, creating the final piece, which you'll see. Here's, here is the painted Suburban. In, this was in Chicago. This was the last show of this suburb, this location. Uh, this location is now in Milwaukee, of the Suburban. They moved. And so this very important space, I got to do the last show, which was nice. So I, I, uh, I painted the outside like Snoopy. Uh, I did the large felt piece. Um, the dimensions of the inside were a little smaller than they had told me, so I folded um, the circle at the bottom. And then uh, I had other paintings in there. I had the monk. I, you know, if Charlie Brown is like the born loser, he kind of matches up with that tenant that all life is suffering, uh, you know. So I feel like he lives the truest life, right, um, because of his suffering. Uh, this was the droids painting, and this is the droids painting, and it is about mentorship. Uh, a friend of mine, a mentor of mine, was showing in a space just uh, next door. And so I was talking about this idea that the suburban brings together people in the arts, friends, mentors, and uh, allows us to uh, make art. And there's, there's poppies um, in, in there as well. So it was only an eight foot by eight foot. You, you get inside and you realize, boy, this is small. I, I didn't expect it to be so small when I got to it. But um, it, it worked out really well. Another shot of the felt piece. It's all felt and some fiber fill. There's no other structure in it. So it, it holds itself together. It's weird looking. Right. 
But it, you have to do these kind of things to push outside your comfort zone to do some new stuff. And so I've been kind of playing with felt a little bit more. Yeah. Where is that? Uh, it's going to be in a show in St. Louis in January. So it's traveling. This show is traveling there with an addition of a few more works. This side of this building was, the, the, the side of the building next to it was yellow. So it was projecting onto the white cube. And so I put a black line there and just called that the Woodstock side. <laughs> I, didn't have to, I didn't have to paint yellow. It was already yellow because of the reflection. All right, here's me. I mean, this is me painting in the studio. So you can see like there's a McDonald's and the Superman thing going on there. And then there's other stuff going on. Um, I've, been, I've been working on these kind of weird abstract narratives, random internet searches like the first uh, of or the last example of or all of these things you know so I'm doing these random searches to find these information and this is what my studio might look like on any given time okay so if you have all the state flowers the first appearance of the Hulk and the first genetically modified fruit food it is tomato it's a fruit right uh, then, if you put them all together, you get that. So I was taking these random things and building, and I have titles for these, and that's what I wanted to read really bad. But this is um, standing in the garden of the, uh, the first genetically modified food. The first appearance of the Hulk can be seen behind a curtain of the state flowers of America. It's this really long title, right? They're all that way. So if you don't like titles, don't come reading my stuff. These are going to be long. Uh, in front of the first photograph, the first appearance of the Flash protects my final profile of Tiger Woods. <laughs> I, I have to call it quits sometimes. Yes? Five minutes. Five minutes. I'm going to go. I'm, I'm the last few. Um, uh, a six pack of the world's uh, mo most sold beer floats in front of the first appearance of Mickey Mouse and the last battle of the Revolutionary War. The flags of the two most populous countries, um, I can't remember the whole title, but uh, the first appearance of the Green Arrow and uh, the last battle of the Roman Empire, or something like that. Um, this is, uh, oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, f uh, the, Cap the first appearance of Captain America on the, the first photographic image of the moon from outer space uh, and the last of the Mohicans defend the first away team. So that's a Star Trek reference. If you don't know. And uh, this is the last starfighter and the first division of the First World War, Snap, Crackle, Pop. <laughs> yeah, that, this is, um, and by the way, these have no surface either. These are like slick, like a bar top. Like there's no, uh, they're all resin and, and air fresh. Uh, this is uh, the, the first Lone Ranger and the first Green Arrow and the most recent, the colors of the most recent um, Triple Crown winner run. Okay. All right. So, any more questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On average, how long does one piece take? Uh, it depends on how, how well some of my process goes because inevitably, you, sometimes there's an error or a flub and you gotta fix that. Um, usually about four or five days of concentration will get the painting done. Yeah. Just Ron Labore. You know, look me up on YouTube and I have a channel there. It just says Ron Labore, yeah. Yes, it is the only painting show because it, 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 it kind of ac accidentally happened. I didn't, I didn't put enough hardener in the resin. And so it looked really nice like a bar. And, I, and I, I, it seemed hard. But so I picked it up, I put it against, and I left the studio. I came back the next day and it kind of run down. And I kind of had a chuckle because like it's about a horse race. <laughs> and this color is running, right? <laughs> and so I was like, well, I'm just going to keep that because that's like brilliant. And, uh, so then I just covered it all with resin so that it's kind of embedded in there, you know, so you, it can't run anymore, and uh, yeah, so it's okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Well, yeah, I think you could put you could put that in there uh, as new media or time based. You know, I, I think about uh, some of the I think about working time based. Uh, you know, I, I I have like video of me making the felt thing too. So a lot of times it's like in the studio process stuff, and then sometimes it's an actual piece of work, like a form that, that comes in, like an animation. Yeah. Here, I don't know, we'll have to talk to somebody about that, I guess, <laughs> right? We'll work on it, we'll work on it. all right. Anyone else? Anyone else? I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.